reincarnations to serial killer hauntings, skeptics everywhere are slowly becoming believers in the paranormal. I'm Melissa Bellotti, your host, and here are your top 10 skeptics who saw the paranormal and lived to tell about it. In our number 10 spot, we have Emily the Ghost. When this storyteller was younger, their family moved in with their grandparents as one of the grandparents was suffering from an illness and needed extra care. Her grandmother had a sister named Emily who had passed away, but when she was alive, she was very mentally ill and would chase the family around with knives before she was hospitalized. It was not even three nights since she had passed when the whole family heard sharp rapping sounds to the door. Apparently, the neighbors heard it too. And when her dad went to see who it was, no one was there. There was nowhere to hide, so it was rather strange that it kept happening. Everyone spoke about it besides her grandma. When questioned why she hadn't said anything, her grandmother said, You know, when Emily was younger, she was always strange. She used to run to my room in the middle of the night, hammer on the door, and run away. They immediately felt panic move over them. The family then became convinced that it was Emily's ghost and suddenly they were skeptics no longer. In our number 9 spot we have the Animal Omen. This storyteller has always been a bit of a skeptic when it comes to stuff like this, but this story in particular they could not deny. In their culture, when an animal comes to you in the middle of the night howling or crying, it's a bad omen and you are told that you should chase it off. Well. One night, he heard a cat whining and a crying noise by the front door. He checked it out and the cat was sitting on his front porch just going berserk. I tried to shoot away, he said. The next morning, he got a call that his cousin was in a car accident. Wow, that's nuts. I actually once had a hurt coyote sleep beside my living room window and now that I think about it, it was around the time when I lost a family member as well. So. Pretty interesting. In our number eight spot, we have Dad at the Fridge. This storyteller lost his father three years ago, and about a year after the incident, he was just sitting at home relaxing when suddenly he heard the back door open, and as clear as day, he saw his dad open the fridge like nothing was going on. It didn't register to him at first as he asked if there was anything new going on. And then he walked by a picture and suddenly felt a flood of emotions as he realized what had just happened. Confusion set in as he turned turned around and saw the fridge door still open and he just stood there crying for a while after that. He was never a believer in ghosts before this. In our number 7 spot we have Runaway Brother. A few years back, a woman by the name of Jackie and her daughter were coming home from the movies together. As they were walking inside the house, Jackie and her daughter both saw Jackie's son run up the stairs to the second floor of the house. Not thinking anything of it, they continued to chat about the movie when suddenly Jackie's son appeared from the basement and asked how the movie was. Jackie and her daughter looked at each other and shivers crept down their spine as they both realized that they witnessed something go upstairs, but it wasn't Jackie's son. Dun dun dun. In our number six spot, we have the stairs. This skeptic stopped believing in all things paranormal when he once had a card reading done and nothing that was said came true. He figured people that told ghost stories were just as fake as psychics. That was until he and his family moved into a house that was a little strange. It didn't particularly look strange, but it was almost as if he suddenly had spidey senses as something just felt off. The basement was the most strange. Whenever he would go into the basement, he felt like he was being watched. But the strangest thing was every time he went up the stairs, he felt an urgent feeling to run up the stairs and get away. His sister also expressed feeling the exact same thing on the stairs. But what really made him a believer was when a friend who knew nothing about his experience said he felt the same Thing. He was convinced that house was haunted from there on out. In our number 5 spot we have the mountain lion. This storyteller had a friend that was constantly having nightmares and couldn't sleep and so he went over to his friends house to stay the night. He had a hard time sleeping but when he finally fell asleep, he woke up suddenly and saw a weird black creature the size and shape of a mountain lion crawl out of his friends closet and go to the edge of the bed. It put its paw up on the bed as if it was feeling for whatever was on the bed. 
he did not sleep that night. The next morning, convinced that he was just dreaming, he told his friend about his nightmare and his friend went as pale as a ghost and she started shaking. She said that was exactly what she had been dreaming about these last few nights when she was having her nightmares. Prior to this, she had never mentioned anything about what she had experienced in her nightmares. Ooh, creepy. I would definitely be a believer after experiencing that kind of situation. In our number four spot, we have the mysterious man. This storyteller was never very interested in the paranormal and just chalked it up to being hocus pocus. He lived with his family in the woods and his closest neighbor was close to a mile away. So they were far away from people. One day when he was younger, he was in his living room facing the hallway to the bedrooms when he saw a man walk from one bedroom to the other. He didn't know who it was, so he went to the porch to ask his mom and aunt who the man was. They immediately freaked out and said it was only the three of them home and then they proceeded to search the house to find the man. They found nobody. That was the one and only time he saw the man, but as he reflects on the memory, he's sure that he saw a ghost. In our number three spot, we have the bird reincarnation. When this storyteller was young, his uncle took his own life. Before doing so, he had lived with him for six months. During that time, his uncle discovered that he had a fear of crows, and his uncle encouraged him to try to work through the fear. One of the last things his uncle said to him was that he was proud of him for trying. After the funeral on his first day back to school, a crow followed him all the way to school. Six blocks. This continued to happen every day for a month. At one point, he started calling the crow Jim, his uncle's name, and that is when he was no longer afraid of birds. Not to mention, that is when he started to believe in an afterlife. In our number two spot, we have Buddy the dog. This storyteller had a childhood dog by the name of Buddy, and Buddy was a black Roddy slash lab mix. When she got older, she moved away from home and Buddy stayed with the family. Her dad had told her to go home for Christmas one year, but she couldn't afford to, so she didn't. Fast forward to a few months later, she was going to have dinner with her dad and boyfriend as her dad was in town visiting her. They stopped at a dog park and an old black Roddy slash lab mix dog came running at her full speed, giving her lots of kisses and acting exactly like how her dog did. When they eventually sat down for dinner, her dad got the message that Buddy had passed away. She felt so thankful for the interaction in the park earlier because she believes that it was as if Buddy had said goodbye to her in that park. Aw, that's so sad and beautiful. Makes me miss my puppy. In our number one spot we have the shadow. One night, this storyteller was in bed with her fiance when she looked up and saw something standing at the foot of the bed at her fiance's side. The figure was pitch black and featureless. She thought she was dreaming until she turned to look at her fiance and noticed that he was staring at it too. He quickly and somewhat aggressively sat up and then whatever it was disappeared. They later found out that everyone in his family has seen this creature and that they call it the shadow. This definitely made her a believer in ghosts. Well hey, that was fun. If you weren't a believer before, I hope this helped make you one now. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'm Melissa Mladi, your host. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You can follow me on Insta or YouTube at Melissa Mladi, and I will see you next time. Have a good day, sir. From animal reincarnations to serial killer hauntings. <laughs> Skeptics, skeptics everywhere are slowly becoming believers in the paranormal.